Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Well, keep watching, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of actually setting up the gears, I think it'd be really useful to understand a little bit about what is actually adjustable on a rear derailleur so you can kind of get a picture for what it is you're, you're doing when you, you make these adjustments later. Um, so just literally to take you through the, the key features of a rear mech, and they'll be the same whether you're on a Campagnolo mech, Shimano mech, SRAM mech. You've got basically limit screws, so they're often called high-low screws. Um, these are the stops um, to set the, the sort of furthest points that mech will reach in each direction. You've got what's called the B-tension adjust screw, and that adjusts the height of the top jockey wheel underneath the cassette. You've also got a barrel adjuster, uh, which adjusts the cable tension. And then, of course, there's a clamp screw for the cable itself. Um, all of those features will be present on, on pretty much whichever mech you're, you're setting up. So that's the sort of basics of what you've got in a rear derailleur to start with. So what I have here is a setup purely for demonstration purposes. There's no cable, no chain, because that's going to make it really easy for me to show you how the limit screws work on a, on a rear derailleur. So the limit screws just govern purely the distance that mech can travel. You can feel that mech hit its stop screw there, and similarly back this way hits its stop screw here. So all we're looking to do is adjust those limit screws. The low screw relates to the, the biggest cassette sprocket, the lowest gear, and the high screw, the higher gear. So if I push that with my thumb, that's why it's really easy to do it without the chain on. I can feel when that mech hits its stop. I can pop the Allen key in the low screw and I can just adjust that accordingly. So until I achieve a point where that top jockey wheel is perfectly aligned underneath the largest cassette sprocket. Exactly the same at the other end of the cassette, the high screw. I'm just gonna pop that Allen key in the adjuster and I can wind the high screw in and out until I've achieved the alignment of the upper jockey wheel perfectly under this furthest cassette sprocket. And that really, in a nutshell, is all the, the, the limit screws do. Once you've got those set, you shouldn't really need to touch those again. If you do, there's a problem somewhere else, maybe uh, a bent hanger or something. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the limit screws. So after you've got your limit screws set up, it's probably worth having a look at the uh, B-tension adjust screw at this point as well. Um, just to sort of get the mech set up in the right ballpark, it helps to do that from the, from the outset. B-tension adjust is this screw here, uh, very visible on this SRAM red derailleur. As I said earlier, it can move around slightly or look slightly different on different brands, but essentially it will be there and, and does the same job. Uh, its job is to govern how far the top jockey wheel sits um, in relation to the cassette sprockets up and down. So the easiest way to see that is to push the, the derailleur to the largest cassette sprocket and, and look and sort of almost measure the gap there. So by adjusting the B-tension screw in or out, you can set that height. Um, that gap should be probably between six and 10 millimeters as a, as a start point. That'll put the rear derailleur in the right kind of ballpark. You may want to adjust it and tweak it once the chain's on and, and once we're, we're set up into the final stages, but for now, that's a good place to start. Okay, so we've got the derailleur set up uh, and ready to go into the final stage of the adjustment, which is that sort of fine tuning of the indexing of the gears. Um, and that's gonna be controlled purely with the barrel adjuster on the rear derailleur. So again, just to reiterate the indexing, there's no need to fiddle with any of the other adjuster screws and things. We're just purely gonna be focusing on the barrel adjuster. I'm kind of expecting the gears not to be uh, perfect on this bike right now. So I'm gonna just take a look. Um, useful thing to note is Setting up the gears is best to start in the, the smallest cassette sprocket, um, and then we'll go from there upwards. So we'll just shift once and see what happens. And back down. So, okay, so shifting that first gear tells me a lot. It tells me that that derailleur is really kind of um, reluctant to help the chain up onto that next sprocket. And that's, that's a useful way for me to explain what the barrel adjuster is doing. So it's a way of adding or subtracting cable tension, basically, nothing more. I'm either gonna add tension by turning the barrel adjuster out or anti-clockwise, or I'm gonna subtract tension by turning it in and clockwise. And what that's gonna do, more tension will help that chain per shift to, to shift up the cassette a little easier. Reducing the tension will help it to come down the cassette easier. And it's kind of like finding that balance, that sweet spot. So let's go back to the bike. Um, what was happening there then is the chain was really reluctant to kind of go up. As you can hear, it's making quite a bit of noise. So what I'm gonna do is just one turn of the barrel adjuster and that's also important to note, 
little and often with that. Like you don't need to make big adjustments at a time. It will actually make quite a big difference more than, more than you think. So just you know, half a turn at a time, even a one turn at a time, and then go back and recheck. So I'm gonna make that shift again. Okay, good. So that's improved. The chain has actually this time gone up onto the sprocket, but it's still really reluctant. So I'm gonna go back and add another turn. Shift back down, and I'm gonna check that shift again. Okay, you can see immediately that that was a much cleaner and crisper shift. So we're starting to get into the point now where the tension is probably about right. Um, but I'm gonna check by carrying on up through the gears a few more. And also to come back down. Because it, it's also possible to over tension the cable which would affect the, the speed of the chain shifting back down the cassette. So that's actually looking pretty good. Um, and all we've done there really is add a couple of turns on the barrel adjuster from fitting the cable. And that, that shift is now pretty sweet. I would say, if anything, I would probably put another half a turn on that just to sweeten up that upshift slightly. Check it all the way up the cassette. Back down. There you go. One final check to make. Um, at this point, it's probably just to revisit that sort of B tension uh, that we mentioned earlier in the video, and that's done by just shifting all the way up to the top sprocket. And then you can have a little look um, at that gap with the chain now fitted, the, the derailleur under tension, how that top jockey wheel is sitting beneath the uh, upper cassette sprocket. And again, that B tension screw just governs that gap, and you want about probably six to 10 mil, um, although some manufacturers do actually specify an exact gap there. So just check that with the uh, installation instructions. So that's all the steps for setting up your rear derailleur and adjusting your gears. Um, I hope you found it useful. Any comments or questions, please post them below. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more tech and how-to videos coming soon.